Hello, and welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Uh, I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you what uh, watching Oliver's Greenhouse in the vacuum of space looks like. That's not really the case. What's happened is I've actually forgot to turn on my lavalier mic, which you can see positioned on my t-shirt uh, at the neckline during this video. So, yeah, foolish me. But um, if you remember from part one, what we've done is we put the... Uh, the two species of Drossera seeds into those little microwavable proof bowls and they've been sat up here in the cupboard wrapped in a little bit of kitchen roll soaking in the gibberellic acid for the last 24 hours so this is the following day uh, they recommend, well I was told to, to leave the seeds at least 24 hours to have a really good soak um, and um, this is the next day so we're going to take them out of the pots we're going to have a quick look at them in a minute and in the next uh, next section of this video, which will have normal volume and you'll be able to hear me and all become apparent, we're going to be sterilising some media uh, onto which we're going to be placing these seeds, hopefully to germinate in the next two to three weeks. So, what you might remember is we have to wrap the uh, seeds up in the kitchen roll, stop them floating around, so we really want to get the seeds fully submersed. This is the Biblish Gigantia seeds in here. You can kind of see like a dark, the, the dark spot is where the seeds are. And they've left some sort of like weird purple staining on the actual kitchen roll. Now this pot here, we've marked up, as some of you may remember, with the DB for Drossa Bromensis. Now they're super tiny. You're not going to be able to see them. I'm not even sure whether they're going to come out on the video, to be entirely honest, because they're just so super tiny. And I was fretting at this point in the video as to how I was going to get the actual seeds off the kitchen roll and onto my chosen media but that will also all become apparent this bit looks the most hilarious because it looks like I'm really really badly dubbed video um, but I promise you all will become apparent in the next section of the video okay so for the Drossera bromensis seeds I'm going to be using just pure moistened peat moss okay so that's all it is nothing overly exciting it's just pure peat moss in this tray and this is in a little uh, microwavable proof um, tray like you would get like a Chinese takeaway in uh, here in the UK. So th that's just got that nice and wet and mixed up because when they germinate in this it's going to be easy to see them and also they will be transplanted. So once they've germinated, once they've grown beyond their approaching seedling size then I'll pot them out into separate little pots um, and grow them individually. So in the meantime what we're going to do is we're going to sterilise this media. So what we're going to do is, I've, remember it's got to be nice and wet, you don't want to end up like causing a fire. And if you have any other microwave at your disposal, rather than your family microwave, uh, it's probably a good idea to use it. And you, normally what I would recommend using as well in this instance would be a thermometer to see what temperature is. You need to get it to approximately 80 degrees centigrade. And what that's going to do is that's going to kill off any of the um, spores which are inside the media, uh, any bacteria. So in this way you'll get a lot less, it'll be, your things will be a lot less likely to get something like damping off fungus or something like that so what we're going to do is we're going to do it in a couple of a couple of bouts so don't just put it in there for 25 minutes and hope for the best so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop it in there i'm going to put it on medium high and i'm going to put it on there for three minutes to start off with because that's going to get hot super quick and what we don't want to do is exploding and going everywhere and I'm going to sort of guess where 80 degrees is. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it. You guys over and have a look at it. Uh, and just keep taking it out and popping it back in again. Because what we don't want to do is it to explode all over the inside of my microwave. Because my wife will kill me. But this is a great way of sterilising a media. Okay, so that's only been in there about a minute and a half. And it's already super hot super super hot as in I can I can only just about touch it so point back in there another minute maybe ah uh, super hot super 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 hot yeah I, I oh, actually I can't actually touch that so that's that's probably about right now that's so hot I literally can't touch it so what we need to do now is leave that somewhere. I'm going to pop that up on top for the meantime, with the lid off, just to cool down, because we can't sow the seeds on that yet, because they'll simply get scorched and die. Right, okay, on to the next lot. 
Okay, so for the Biblis Gigantia seeds, we're going to need some big pots. These guys like to get pretty massive. Uh, they've got pretty deep roots as well, because obviously at times it can be quite arid where they come from. So I'm going to be using these pots, which are kind of round at the bottom, but kind of square at the top. And they're about five and a half inches deep. Um, ideally, if you can find it, something over six inches would be perfect uh, for this. But these are simply the... I haven't got enough space really to, to warrant putting them in anything else. So hopefully they'll be fine in these. Not some of the old, should have given them a clean beforehand uh, just to ensure there's no cross contamination. I'm sure they're going to be fine. Uh, and I can't actually remember how many seeds um, we had. I think it was five, I think, although it could have been three. Uh, perhaps it's probably worth checking that. So the media for these guys anyway, is they like a really sandy mix. So what we're going to do, we've got some silica sand over here. I've also got some leftover horticultural sand as well. So we're going to be a two to one mix. So that's two parts sand to one part peat, uh, which is going to really bulk out the peat, which is going to be really, really useful because they're like really free draining. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. Now I'm just going to mix that up basically by hand. So for what I'll do is I'll just do two two handfuls of sand, like that, to one part peat. You could just use a measure, you could use, you could use um, a trowel and do, do it that way, or you could use something like a mug or cup uh, and measure it out in the same manner. But, so basically you, you want a real free draining mix with only a very small amount of organic matter in there. So it's going to be, and what we're going to do is we're going to top the top of the pots off with aquarium gravel as well, because that's going to impede any moss growth. Um, it reflects a bit of heat, and it makes the plants look really good because they, they, some of them can have been known to live in quite uh, sort of like gravelly conditions. So what I'm going to do is put another. Remember here, at Oliver's greenhouse are really bad at measuring stuff out. So more of those. This is really washed out. Must make sure. If you are, even if you're using horticultural sands, uh, take some of it before you use it. Add a little bit of vinegar to it, and if it fizzes, don't use it. That means it's got calcium in it, uh, which is not good if you're growing carnivorous plants. Uh, so actually wash even the horticultural sand. Get some water out, get some fresh water out of the water butt, and put it in a bucket, put the sand in, shrill it round, and do exchange the water a few times, and that way you'll wash the majority of the stuff out of it. Don't use things like children's play sand. That certainly don't do use sharp sand or builder's sand because that's also got loads of salt in it. It's going to be rubbish. So you'll end up with whatever it is you plant in there dying off. So Okay, so the next big job, once we've got the pots all sorted, all the pots lined up over there, on the table waiting for us, uh, the um, peat moss that we heat, that we sterilised using the microwaves all cooled down, so it's not going to ruin the seeds. And the next thing to do is to unwrap these. So these are the bib list seeds. These are going to be really easy to use because they're quite big. Um, I seem to remember, I think there was three seeds in here. I think there are three seeds. We'll have a look. We'll, we'll know soon enough. Uh, I was opening the uh, containers of the gibberellic acid and I thought to myself, wow, these really smell like, uh, really smells like Chinese food and realised that the um, pots they're in did actually have Chinese food in at some point. So gibberellic acid doesn't smell like Chinese, it only smells like Chinese if it's in a container which has previously had Chinese. Now this is going to be tricky, this one, because like most Drosera seeds, these ones are flipping tiny, so I'm not entirely sure how we're going to get them from the kitchen roll onto the potting media because they are microcosmically small. They are in there, I can see them. So if I zoom you guys in. Hopefully you'll be able to see. You can kind of see the Biblis seeds. They're in the centre of shot now. 
So those guys, I think, are going to be pretty easy. I'm not too concerned about them. Um, I think it's going to be pretty straightforward using them. And then over this side here, kind of in the center of the shot, you might just be able to see a dark sort of dot about there. This has got the Drosobromensis seeds on it. So the next thing to do will be to decant these onto the media that we're going to be using, which I think is going to be quite tricky, especially given the size of some of the ones that we're going to be using. So I think we'll start off with the easiest ones. We'll use the, uh, we'll do the Biblis ones straight away. Okay, so the Biblis seeds are actually of a size where I can actually just pick them up on my finger like that. And very carefully, eventually they will dry up and they will drop between finger and thumb. Alternatively, we can cheat and use something like, if I can get my hands on one, a paper clip, just to knock it off of my thumb and onto the surface of the media. There we go. That has now been supposited onto the top of the media. Let's get the next one. Just got to be super careful. I would do them with tweezers, but the trouble is tweezers, are, I've got quite clumsy fingers and I'd be scared of pushing too hard with a set of, of tweezers and actually squashing the seeds. Excellent. Just going to give them, it's already damp media, it's not wet, but it's damp. So what we're going to do is, we're going to give the surface of each of the pots a good dampening using this spray bottle. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put some cling film or saran wrap, whatever you want to call it, depending on your geographical location over the tops of them once I've put a bit of gravel. So we'll gravel the surface here first. And then we'll cover them with saran wrap and that will um, lock in a lot of that, uh, a lot of that humidity. The next ones to do are going to be super tricky and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it because they are, they're almost imperceptibly small. If I hold them up to the mirror, up to the mirror, up to the camera, you can't even really see, even if I zoom right in, they are super small. They look like tiny little, tiny specks of soil. That's all they look like. So what I'll do is, I will slide these to one side Like that. I'm going to pick this up here. This has got all of the seeds on it. I'm just going to push it down onto the media like this. And hopefully, in theory, what's going to happen is it's going to pick all those little seeds off and when I lift this up they're all going to stick to the media and not onto this that's the theory and just to be extra sure I'm going to wash this off by spraying it And I can already see what's happening there. It's actually cleaning the kitchen roll right off. So the hope is that if there are any seeds left on here, they're all going to get washed into there. 
Okay, so it's nice and sludgy. It's really nice and damp. So that's those guys. Hopefully, that's those guys in position now. So what I'm going to do is cling film them and pop them in the greenhouse. Okay, so I hope you found this video in some way informative. Once again, this is as much of an experiment for me as it is for you guys. I've never used uh, GA3, never used gibberellic acid before. Um, you know, it's been proven time and time again to work really well with tricky seeds uh, and those which uh, may otherwise require some form of advanced stratification uh, to get them to germinate. So I'm feeling positive about it. Both the pots and this is going to go into the greenhouse now, not in direct sunlight, in a bit of diffuse sunlight, so they're not going to get scorched. And um, I'm not expecting anything to happen for at least the next three to four weeks. So uh, as soon as something happens, uh, well, I was going to say you guys will be the first to know about it. I'll be the first to know about it. And then you guys will be the next to know about it. So I'll definitely do an update on it. And fingers crossed some of these really cool carnivorous plants uh, work for me. So uh, if you like this video and uh, you want to see more like it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up like down below. And uh, if you like the content I make, uh, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.